Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 8 in our Shopkeeper series. This will be the final episode as we are approaching the end of it. this series. The last part we've got left to do is on the sell menu of our shop. If we buy something. We want to be able to click on it to sell it back to the shopkeeper and retain some gold back. To accomplish this, we need to make a remove from inventory function on our inventory component and then tell the widget to update itself. So to begin, we need to go to the inventory component to create our remove from inventory function. So I'm going to go into new functions and name this one remove from inventory. And what this one's going to require is a input for item ID. So it knows which one to remove. And this will be an integer. If we wish, we can also add a quantity to this. However, we're just going to make it a cell just one at a time. So to remove from inventory, we're just going to do basically almost the exact opposite of what we do for add inventory. So first of all, we need to find the item inside our map. And then from there, we're going to take it away from the quantity. So let's go to remove from inventory. So drag your inventory map out and choose get. And from there, search for find. The find will require the item ID. So find is going to search for the item ID within our inventory map. If it exists, which it should do hopefully, if, but if it, does, if it does exist, it will go into a branch and go true or false. If it exists, it'll be true. If it doesn't exist, it'll be false. So if it does exist, we want to take one away from its inventory um, quantity. So we're going to drag our uh, find out from here and do minus. And that minus will require just the number one. As we're only taking one away from the quantity. After that, we need to set that back, that new value back to our inventory map. So go to inventory map, choose get, and then from there, search for add. The add is going to go into true. And the item ID is coming from our input over here. So we can just search for that if you like, item ID. And the other number is our quantity, our new quantity, which is this value here. So plug that in like so. But what if that new quantity is a zero? Well, if it is zero, then we need to tell it to remove the entire item from the map. So we're gonna go and check if it's zero. So it's less than or equal to zero. This will go into a branch. And we're going to insert that in between the add and the first branch. So the add here will go to the false. So it's carrying as normal. So here we're going to be checking if it is less than zero on the true. That means we need to remove it entirely from our map. So drag your inventory map out again, or use the existing one that we've got here. And we're searching for remove. And the remove function will simply remove it from the map entire, entirely. And the item ID will simply plug into the bottom value of that. And it looks like we're done. So we'll click compile and we're done there with our map. So now we've got the remove from inventory function, we can now use that on our widget. So let's go into our widget. On our shopkeeper UI, in the graph, we need to call our generate player grid and this clear children function that we made previously when we switched into the different mode. This essentially is updating everything on the screen, refreshing it. So when we sell an item, we need to tell that to happen. So let's create a function in here called, or custom event rather, called refresh grid. And we're just going to copy and paste all of this stuff here, or we can just drag our refresh grid over to the side, like so. Click compile. So now when this function is called, this event is called, sorry, this will now clear all the children from the player inventory 
go through the loop and generate the player grid again. So now we've got that, we now need to be able to call this event. And that will happen on the individual slots themselves. So let's have a look at that. Once on the slot, we're going to go over to the graph and we're on the on clicked event. Now currently the on clicked event is what's left over from when we duplicated it. So we don't actually want this. So let's clear this out and delete it. Now the shopkeeper using event dispatcher will be using a very similar thing as well. So go to over to event dispatchers and where's this item sold? We're just going to rename this one to item removed. And we're going to change the inputs just to include the item ID. So on when it's on clicked, we want to tell the uh, you, uh, the player's inventory to remove the item from its uh, inventory. And then from that, we're going to tell it to update the UI. So let's get the player character and cast to that actor. From there, we can get the inventory component. And then we can call that remove from inventory. And it requires an item ID, so we just drag our variable item ID over to it. So now that's working, we're now going to do the call of the item removed event dispatcher. So drag that out, let go, and choose the call option. The call option requires an item ID, so simply just use that same variable brought over to it. When you're done here, click Compile. Now let's return to the Shopkeeper UI. Now to call this refresh grid, we need to bind it to that event dispatcher we set up in our button. Now to do that, we need to go over the Generate Player Grid function. And in here, we need to create that binding using the return value from the widget. So drag from the return value and search for Bind Event to Item Removed. Like so. The event for this, we need to make it an input on our function here. So drag the event over and drop it on the, on the starting node. This will add the event as an input on our generate player grid. Click compile, then head over to your event graph. So now you see the event is now an input on our generate player grid. That means we can now bind an event to it. Now we can't just drag it onto the refresh grid, that's because the event that we're binding does not match the inputs to that have on the refresh grid. So click on refresh grid and we're going to add the item ID. And we need to make this an integer and then click compile. We can now connect our event to our refresh grid and click compile. So now we've made that connection there, we're still going to get a compile error. That's because we've used generate player grid elsewhere, such as here, requiring an event to be bound to it. Now to bind that event, we're simply just going to tell that to go over to our refresh grid here and connect that right up to there. Like so. The compile and now clear that error. So currently, it's just going to update the slot and won't actually give us any money back. So that's how, let's go about how we get that to give us money. So on the refresh grid, before we go to clear children, I'm going to disconnect the execute and we're going to use the item ID to get how much money we're going to add back to the player. So to get the item details, we need to get data table row. And we need to convert our int here to a string. And then drag that into our row name. We're going to select our data table from the dropdown. And if rows found is true, we're going to use the out row here by splitting it to get the row cost. So this is the cost of the item. And what I'm going to do is give the player back some money. Not a whole amount, just a small portion of it. So to do that, we're going to do <coughs> So 
So to do that, we're going to get our player character. Get money. Oh, no, sorry, cast to first. Cast to third person character. And we want to get the money they have. And from there, we're going to add to it another integer. The integer we're going to add is the row cost multiplied by 0.8. That means we only get 80% of it back. Now it's going to give us a float. And so what we're going to do is take it to truncate, which means it just lops off the decimal point. So then we connect that into our integer. We can now set the money back by dragging from our third person character to be equal to the new value. And once we've done all that, we can tell it, if I just move this all along, tell the set to go to that clear children to update and refresh the grid. And click compile. Now let's test this out. So let's go over to the shop. Let's purchase some gunpowder. Go to sell it and click on it. So it refreshes, but the money didn't change. That's because I forgot to tell it to update the player wallet. So back into your shopkeeper UI, into that graph. And after we set the money, we're going to tell it to update the player wallet. So drag that out and just simply connect it to the end. Like so. So now we're going to go play and test that out. And it should return some money to us. So spend it, purchase it, and it returns some money. Go back to buying, and I can click on my pumpkin and my gunpowder twice. Go back to my menu, and I can sell my pumpkin, sell one gunpowder, sell another gunpowder. And there you have it. So before we wrap up, we're going to fix one little bug in this. So the current bug we have is that when we go up to the menu, and we click on the sell button first of all, the button doesn't change its text. And therefore it delays and therefore it doesn't match the screen that you want. So let's go and have a look at what's causing that issue. So in your shopkeeper widget, you want to head over to your graph and take a look at your update mode function. Because that is what handling is, is handling the mode change on the button. So the issue here I can see is I've accidentally set the sell and the buyer to the wrong pathway here. Because the current mode is switching, so if it's currently zero and going to be switching to one, I want the the button to represent what one will be, and one's going to be the buy button, or saying the buy button. So I just want to switch these around to say buy there and sell here. Click compile, and go back to our game. Hit play, and I go to our shop. I can purchase three gunpowder, two pumpkins. Go to my sell menu, sell gunpowder, sell pumpkin. So all my equipment to get not all my gold back, but some. I go back to buy, and I keep doing the same thing. And there you have it. And that is the entirety of this series. Thanks very much for watching. It's been a fun series, and we've done lots of interesting stuff with it. And as you've seen, we tried to do a different type of inventory system than you have seen in the previous series in my inventory system series. If you have any suggestions for a future series down the line, please leave a comment below. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notify bell to be notified for when new videos come out. Thanks to, thank you to all my patrons for their support uh, throughout this series and all the rest of my videos. We wouldn't be doing this without you guys. You are amazing. Thank you so much. And if you want to be a patron and get access to the new series right now or head over to find more exclusive videos, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. Simply donating $1 a month, it will support me greatly, and for that, you'll get access to all those videos, Discord access, as well as many other benefits. Thanks again, and hopefully I'll see you around next time.